Hey there, subscribe to my channel, and also press this bell icon so you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. Part 1 1. You are going to hear a conversation between an agent and a client. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Are you open yet? Yes, we are. Come in. Would you like to rent an apartment in the city? Well, kind of. I'd rather rent one near the harbor if possible. Oh, okay. Do you like the water? Yes, I do. But I actually repair sailboats for a living. So I'd like to be close to work. That's understandable. We all want to live close to work. Well, I think I have something near there. How many rooms would you like? Just one. I'm alone. But I would like to have an extra room for my dog. So you'd like two rooms and an apartment that accepts animals. Hmm. Here's one. It's one block up from the harbor and renting for $445. How's that? That's perfect. Just what I was hoping to pay. What floor is it on? Floor? Oh, it's on the twelfth floor. That's too high. I'd like to be on the first or second floor so that I don't have to use the elevator. My dog, he's scared of them. Oh, well then, that's a little more complicated. Let me make a few calls. Okay, I think I found a couple more for you. Here's one that might suit your needs. How much? $395 a month. That's cheap. But it's only a one-bedroom, a large one, but it's still just one room. Oh. Well, regardless of whether the room is small, I still need a separate room for my dog. What else do you have? Then I have a two-bedroom for $565 on the second floor that is a little further away from the harbor. How far? About a half mile, and they accept pets. That's a little more than I had planned on paying but I guess I could look at it. What's the address? 224 Williams Avenue, Harbor Square. 224 Williams Avenue. Got it. Now look at questions 7 to 10. As the talk continues, answer questions 7 to 10. What else is included? Let's see. It has a washer and dryer, refrigerator and stove, a bed, dressers and shelves, and access to a swimming pool, game room, and gym. Ooh, I'll definitely take a look. Hi, how did you like it? It's great. I love the amenities, but the bed and furniture are awfully dirty. Can they replace those before I move in? Sure, that shouldn't be a problem. Anything else? Yeah. I didn't see anywhere to park my car. Is there a parking lot in the basement? Yes, there is. Would you like to rent a space? No, I'd like that to be included in the rent. Oh, well, I'll see what I can do, but I can't guarantee that. Do you want to take it anyhow? If those two issues were solved, I would love to take it. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. Part two. You have just arrived at the student hostel where you will live during the term. The manager is explaining the rules, and another student is asking questions. Listen to the conversation and complete the form. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to sixteen. Excuse me, I want to ask you about the charges for meals. Are they the same as they were last year? No, I'm afraid they're not. We've managed to keep most of them the same, but we've had to increase the charge for breakfast. How much is it now? It's two dollars fifty. It used to be two dollars. I see. What about lunch? It's unchanged. Still three dollars. Does dinner still cost three dollars? Yes, it does. We've managed to keep the prices down this year, but the best deal is the three meal plan for forty eight dollars per week. We give you vouchers to present when you come into the cafeteria, and you get twenty one meals for your forty eight dollars. That works out to a little more than two dollars a meal. The two meal plan is also at last year's rates of thirty six dollars per week. We give you vouchers for that too. My sister was in this hostel before me. I'm sure the hours for breakfast used to be longer. Yes, they were. They used to be seven to nine thirty, but to keep our expenses down, we made them seven to nine. Lunch is the way it was, though. Hold on, dinner six to seven thirty. Isn't that a change? Yes, it is, and in fact, the form is wrong. It used to be five thirty to seven thirty, but now it's six to eight p.m. Six to eight p.m. That's good. So, which plan would you like? I'd like to think about it, please. I need to check my lecture schedule. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions seventeen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions seventeen to twenty. Can you tell me how to get to my room, please? Of course, you're in the new wing, which is very freshly painted and pleasant. But I'm afraid you're going to have to go to a couple of other offices before you can have the key. You're in the admissions office now. Leave this office and turn right and go to the end of the hall. The last office is the fees office, where you can pay the balance of your room deposit. They'll give you a receipt. Okay. After you've been to the fees office, come back past admissions. You'll see a very large room at the northwestern corner of the building. You can't miss it. That's the student lounge, and if you go in there, you can meet some of the other students and see who'll have a room near you. That's good. Can I get a cup of coffee there? Yes, there's a vending machine in the corner. Then go to the key room, which is opposite the lift and next to the library. Show them your receipt, and you can pick up your key there. My luggage was sent on ahead. Do you know where I should collect it? The box room is next to the women's toilet. You'll have to get the key from the key room. Thank you. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part three. Part three. Listen to somebody giving a talk about how setting goals can help you achieve more. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see that so many people managed to make it—an achievement in itself. When I'm sure you're all so busy. This evening, I'm going to talk with you about setting goals and how setting goals can help you understand what you really want to achieve. First, though. I'd like to start by saying what I think achievement actually means. I think some people think it's simply about being successful in a job or making money, but it certainly doesn't have to mean that. Achievement is simply accomplishing goals that you set for yourself, doing what you plan to do, and people might plan to do all sorts of different things. Achievement. Is about realizing your dreams. I would also like to say that to achieve, you must have belief—belief belief that you can do whatever it is you want to do. There is more to achievement than simply wanting to do something. Anyone can say that they want something, but actually getting it is not so easy. To get it, you must believe that it is yours. Not having belief. Is the main reason that so many people do not achieve. If you really want something, you must talk and act like you already have it. Then you have belief, and then you will achieve. So, goal setting. Goal setting is about imagining the future and then turning the dream into a reality. Setting goals helps you to be clear about what you really want. And helps you concentrate on getting what you want. Setting goals will help you see what is stopping you from knowing what's important. And because achieving goals makes you feel good, you will be more confident and succeed more easily. Goal setting is something that all achievers do, whether they are high flyers in business or successful athletes. It is important that you set both long-term and short-term goals. First, you need to have an idea of what you want from life. I call this the big picture. Then you break this down into a number of smaller goals that you need to achieve in order to achieve the overall goal. As I say, the first step is to see the big picture. Think about what you want in the next fifteen or twenty years. Doing this will influence all the smaller goals that you set yourself. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-five to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-five to thirty. You need to think carefully about different areas of your life and how they influence each other. You should identify the important areas of your life, and try to set goals in each of those areas. Here are the areas that most people want to focus on, but remember that everyone is different. First. Think about your career. How important is your career to you? Do you want to be a manager or run your own business, or are you happy working for other people? Connected to this is the financial side of your life. What sort of income do you want to have? Is wealth important to you?
you need to think about long-term relationships. At what age do you hope to be married? Do you want to have children? How much time do you want to spend with the people you love? You need to think about your health and how that could change what you can achieve. How will you stay healthy as you get older? Do you do anything that is not good for your health? And how will you try to do those things less or stop doing them completely? Finally, you need to think about your free time, your hobbies and interests. How much time do you want to have to do what you really enjoy? It is difficult to achieve goals in one area if you feel that you don't have the time to do the things that really make you happy. Now, when you have this overall picture, try to set yourself one goal for each area. Make sure the goals are what you really want and not what you think other people want from you. Of course, in life, it is important to make the people around you happy, but you must focus on what you want. Now, I will go on to talk about how to break your lifetime plan down into short-term goals. But first, does anyone have any questions about what I've said so far? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear the speech made by Mr. Samaranch on the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. Listen and complete questions 31 to 40. Here is the President of the International Committee. Mr. Samaranch's speech out of the opening ceremony of the 26th Olympic Games, I'll read it for you. On behalf of the International Olympic Committee, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the Games of the 26th Olympiad, Sydney 2000. The goal of the Olympic movement is to contribute to building a peaceful and better world by educating youth through sport practice without discrimination of any kind, and in the Olympic spirit. In the spirit, nations and youth of the world come together every four years to celebrate the world's largest sporting festival. SOCOG has organized these sporting competitions in consultation with the international federations, responsible for each sport. This is through nomination of technical officials, specification of technical requirements, and the cooperation with IOC and SOCOG on venue and other preparations. We thank each international federation for their vital efforts in the preparation of these Millennium Games. The Sydney 2000 Olympic Games is also the centenary of women's participation. With a record number of events and disciplines for women at the Games, the Olympic movement continues to recognise and support the vital role of women in sport. As we embark on a new millennium, it is the Olympic Games that will continue to unite the world and celebrate humanity. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.